Hi folks, I'm JP, and I thought I would do a quick little video here on how to <clears throat> jump to the center of the galaxy in No Man's Sky Origins 3.0, the update that came out late September 2020. Um, how to jump to the center of the galaxy and then jump to the next galaxy and repeat this process indefinitely, if you wish, all the way through all 256 galaxies. So I'm going to start. I'm going to walk you through the entire loop of the process here. I have actually just completed this process in one galaxy, the 29th galaxy, uh, whose name I forget. And so yeah, I'm just going to go straight through. Yeah, like uh, I'll, I'll talk more about what about the state that you end up in after you have jumped to a new galaxy uh, at the end of this process. But for now, let's just assume that you're starting out on. You're on a planet. You have a ship. Um, so yeah, so here's what I'm going to start with. So there's a few things, there's a few prerequisites, and I'm going to talk about each one as they come to it. Um, and then also, yeah, I should say that um, as far as like why you would want to go to another galaxy in No Man's Sky, I'll also talk about that um, towards the end of this. I'll, I'll pull up the No Man's Sky wiki and explain a little bit what it means to be in a different galaxy. So anyway, um, yeah, so the first prerequisite that I can think of is that uh, you will want a freighter. You get one of these for free pretty early on in the game, and um, yeah, and you can summon it in. And then there's a special room that you can build in your freighter that will allow you to summon an exocraft, uh, which is one of the vehicle, which is a vehicle. Um, almost any of them will do, uh, but what we want the exocraft down here for is it has a scanner that will allow us to find a certain type of building. I'm also going to, so that's one ship, that's my old ship right there, but I'm also going to summon in uh, my my fast ship that uh, is in good working order and will let me do pretty much everything that I need to do for this. Okay, so I hop in the Exocraft and we're not actually gonna go anywhere in it. Uh, I'm just going to bring up the Exocraft signal booster. And, uh, and then I'm going to, these are all the different kinds of structures that the Exocraft scanner can search for. And I'm going to go to, I'm going to go all the way to the end and select scan for alien structures. And then it's going to pop up a little thing on my, on my HUD there, uh, that is highlighting a new alien structure that it's found, a monolith. Uh, and it looks like that's two minutes travel away by this vehicle. So rather than go all the way there, this, this little walkthrough video is, is mostly about it's mostly about speed, so I'm just going to hop in my ship and go there because I do just kind of want to show you how um, how quick it is. Um, yeah, by the way, actually, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a trade platform right there, and um, at this monolith, it's going to ask us for an item that uh, that we that you may not have, so that's another prerequisite. Um, I'll get into it. it. It might vary depending on what, what type of aliens have, uh, have colonized the star system. But yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna get on my ship. I'm gonna go up to this monolith, and yeah, and I'm gonna interact with its interaction point here. And it's going to show you some alien uh, speech if you've used a lot of the knowledge stones and become fluent in the alien languages. Then this will be readable English. If not, it might not be. Um, Right, and it's actually kind of directing you to do something. It's like, okay, respect first spawn belongings. First spawn is a is an ancient geck. So um, yeah, and these little these little text mini adventures tend to be very specific, and they're asking you to do a particular thing. Um, so I think they're saying don't touch the treasure. Right. But I don't think the outcome, you need to have done this correctly or incorrectly uh, to be able to do what happens next. You'll notice that this thing, you know, it gives you a little reward for doing that, or maybe it punishes you, whatever. The second interaction that you can do is actually a different one. And this is the one that we want, because what we want to locate is a portal. Um, and this will require a type of item that you can only get from uh, the alien race that uh, that uh, holds sway in in this in the particular star system where you're doing this. In this case, it's the Gek, and so it wants a Gek relic from me, and I will use that Gek relic here to locate a portal. And then another icon pops up on our on our radar here, and that one is very far away. So we're gonna hop back in our ship. And so yeah, these portals are, as you might have seen, uh, the stargates that allow you to travel. 
uh, pretty much anywhere in the galaxy. Um, all right, yeah, it's further away, so we're going to fly up into space so that we can drop down on this. Okay, and here we are. This is a portal. And so yeah, this is another prerequisite that we need here. Um, it's We're gonna need resources, of, like small bits of various resources in the game to uh, activate this portal, to make it so that we can use it to dial up whatever, whatever star system we want. Um, and so yeah, like it's going to want uh, a, a few different categories of each resource, one of which is either sodium or sodium nitrate. So I'm going to do all of those. And yeah, they, it's, it, they, the sequence repeats a few times over the course of the, what is it, 12 or 16 um, things. And then it wants some, you know, any of these five elements. So I'm going to plug those in. And now it's going to want one of the stellar materials, like the the, the the metals that are specific to a given type of color of star system. And I'm just using the ones that I have the most of. There's no real there's no real particular reason I'm choosing these other than that it's the most convenient. Okay, and so now we've activated the the portal. And um, yeah, so here's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to activate the portal, and, and now we've basically got like a phone dialer type interface here where I can punch in these, all of these glyphs. There's 12 of, what is it? Let's see. Oh, no, it's 16 of them, right? Okay, yeah, right. There's 16 glyphs. That makes sense because 16 is an important. That's right, but there's 12 glyphs in a the equivalent of a phone number here. So, yeah, so I'm going to punch in a sequence that um, this might not seem like it, it would be a little difficult to explain the full intricacies of what these numbers mean. Uh, and if you're just looking to replicate this, you can just kind of copy what I'm doing here. But, um, but yeah, uh, th these basically all refer to like something's coordinates within a galaxy. And I'm going to punch in coordinates that I know will take me roughly to the center of a galaxy. Right now I'm out on the fringe or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like 600,000 something light years away from the center of this galaxy. So I'm going to punch in the coordinates of something that will get me pretty darn close to the center. And if we're a little ways away, that's okay. Because that will put us only a few jumps away. Um, okay, and so now the portal is active and we can step through it. And now we are heading through weird Stargate space to this planet that we've dialed up. And so this is one of the differences. The, the reason I'm doing this video now is because this process of portal travel to the center of the galaxy uh, has become much easier with the recent update that came out a few weeks ago. Um, because what this used to, what traveling through a portal used to mean is that while on the on the far side of it, your your ship would be waiting here for you and all that, you couldn't actually leave this star system, and you couldn't claim a base in this star system. So getting around and it, that that whole dynamic that forbade you from doing that uh, was called portal interference. And I think the original idea behind it was to um, was to make distance more meaningful and make it so that yeah, you know, you can't just instantly jump to the center. And I think with or with the Origins update. Uh, the developers, Hello Games, basically just decided, no, this isn't worth like you know because people found a ways ways to to work around it and stuff. So they basically said, screw it, let's just let people take a portal wherever they want within a given galaxy. So yeah, okay. So here is where I have materialized. I'm now only about uh, five thousand light years from the center of the galaxy. Here, the center is this glowing this glowing thing. Uh, the galaxy that I am in is the 29th galaxy, I believe. It's called uh, uh, Wat Yerogi. 
Uh, the names after the fifth galaxy are procedurally generated, so they have that kind of odd ring to them. And so, yeah, I am just going to like. You'll notice that once we get close enough to the to the to the center of the galaxy, the actual star systems just kind of like taper off into nothing. And so, one of these systems, and we don't know exactly which one yet, is going to be a system that we can use to jump into the center of the galaxy. So, I'm going to jump here. I'm going to pick one that's like just nice and close here, and I am going to hyperspace jump to it. We're not actually going to spend much of any time in this star system, but, um, but yeah, we're basically going to pull up the galaxy map as soon as we get there and see, see where that put us. Okay. Uh, wow, okay, so somebody is just, somebody signed their Twitter. Somebody, this, this probably is a gateway system because somebody signed their Twitter handle to it. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, this is a gateway system, which, and I know that because there is a line, there, my, my little destination up top is point me towards the galactic core, and this line is going straight from the system where we currently are to the galactic core. Um, so yeah, if it's possible that we might have, like if we had chosen to jump here instead, this orange line would have been leading us first to this system and then on to this. So you may have to make a, a couple of jumps here, but you know if you've gotten this far in the game and you know how to do all this stuff, then that's, that's, that's gonna be pretty easy for you. So okay, we're basically ready to jump. Um, and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to summon in my freighter again, and then I am going to go into it. And go into the hangar. And so yeah, we're, we're, we're very close to being able to jump to the center of this galaxy. And one thing that jumping to the center of a galaxy and appearing somewhere in the next is that it breaks uh, a bunch of your equipment and stuff. So in my exosuit here, you see how a lot of these, all these things have like red exclamation marks next to them? That's the effects of the previous jump uh, that did this. And I didn't bother to fix it because, you know, we're spending all of, you know, five or ten minutes in this new galaxy before we jump to the next. Um, however, this also happens to all of the technology on the ship that you take into the center and to the multi-tool that you're carrying at the time. So what I'm going to do here, and this is maybe one of the bigger prerequisites here, is I'm going to uh, switch to, you can, you can own multiple multi-tools as of a few updates ago. And so I have basically a, a backup multi-tool. See, it's like this funky looking alien thing. And I haven't actually put any upgrades into it. And all of the tech is already broken. So I don't really, you know, it's, it, it's not really hurting anything. You know, it's not costing me anything to take this into the center. Um, and so now we're gonna go back to the ship that you might've seen me standing next to at the very beginning of this video. This is actually my very first uh, ship that I found like four years ago when I, or, or it's a very early ship that I owned and I held on to it just mostly for sentimental reasons. Um, but this ship also, it's very basic. I haven't bothered to upgrade it or anything. It has, I, I can't upgrade it basically uh, due to a quirk in like how the legacy ships got carried into new updates. Anyway, it's, it's basically the equivalent of this backup multi-tool, but for ships. And so this is the ship that we're actually going to jump to the center in. So I'm gonna hop out here just to create a save. Um, Yeah, so, okay. So yeah, we're gonna fly out of our freighter. We're gonna go to the galaxy map. And then basically, uh, I'm playing on mouse and keyboard. So this is a little less intuitive. Uh, I think if you're using a gamepad uh, and or you're on a console, you can just like move the right analog stick or something. Whereas here I have to move the mouse in the direction that the galax that that line is pointing. And then I have to hold down the mouse button. This is a really weird, old, it's been, it's worked like this since the very beginning of the game, basically. Um, and so now, like, after it completed that little ramp up process, um, it's now showing us that the galaxy center is now a warp destination. So I'm just going to hold down the mouse button and then boom, we are headed into the center of this galaxy. And we're going to get a cool sort of 2001 audiovisual light show. And one of the nice odd songs from the soundtrack uh, for the game, Super Moon, is going to play. And yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna chill for a moment since there's nothing I can.
can really do or talk about right now. Yeah, it's a good soundtrack. How are you? I hope you're having a good day. <laughs> Every galaxy has a slightly different colored center. This galaxy's center is uh, kind of that cyan color. Yeah, we are flying back out of it. Leaving it behind. Yeah, now we're out at the edge of this galaxy. And we're turning away from it. Now, we are turning towards the next galaxy. So there are 256 galaxies in No Man's Sky that are accessible without cheating, I should say. Um, this new one is called Sudzerball, which, you know, again, it's procedurally generated, has a funky name. Um, and so, yeah, this is the 30th galaxy. And I got here basically by doing something analogous to this process for most of the preceding galaxies. Um, and so, yeah, maybe I should talk about what is what the benefit of going to a new galaxy is. Um, there are four different types of galaxies in No Man's Sky currently, and they each have different uh, probability distributions or a different mix of the kinds of planets that you'll encounter. Um, this particular star system that we're jumping into has a higher proportion <clears throat> every star system, every yellow star system, I think, uh, has a higher proportion of lush planets, like tropical, like pleasant weather, looks like an earth grassland or forest or whatever. Um, so it's rather nice. Um, and the galaxy that you start off in is just considered a normal one. It has like sort of the, the normal average distribution of these different kinds of things. And so, yeah, here we are in the new galaxy. And yeah, we're looking around and we don't see our ship. I, we've basically been deposited on a completely random planet, uh, roughly 600 to 700,000 light years away from the center of the new galaxy. And yeah, as you can see, yeah, our ship is out of range. Our multi-tool is still busted. But one thing I can do is I can just switch back to a functioning one, and now I've got a fully functioning multi-tool again, and I can use a scanner, and I see little radar blips and stuff. It looks like it is nighttime. And so yeah, our ship, you always start about 500 to 600 units away from your ship. And yeah, it's dark out here, but you can kind of tell that this is a pleasant planet. Yeah, the weather is balmy. So yeah, this is a pretty, yeah. And, and again, yeah, this is, a, this is a lush galaxy, so you'll see a, a higher likelihood. You'll just see more lush planets. There will be more planets that are generally pleasant like this, although there is considerable variation within those. Some of them will have fierce storms, and some of them will be swamps as of the recent update and all that. So, yeah, so we're just hiking to our ship. Kind of hoping that the sun, yeah, the sun won't come up for another minute or two. But, um, but, yeah, and there's our good old ship. And so, yeah, at this point, we are basically back where we started at the beginning of this video. Um, yeah, you jump into your vehicle, into your ship, and you'll notice that, um, you know, that some stuff is out of, it, that everything is, everything is busted. Um, I have big stockpiles of all the resources, so I can just easily fix all that. Um, in order to be able to make the next jump, you will want to uh, repair your hyperdrive and also recharge it with a warp cell. You need to have a full, a fully tank, a full tank to be able to make the jump. You will also sometimes need uh, a, a, a stellar color drive appropriate for the type of galaxy that you're jumping to. In this case, it looks like I didn't need it. So I'm, I just left my indium drive broken. Those, those, are the, those are the upgrades that let you access different colors of star system. So yeah, and then at this point, I can, uh, I can summon in my freighter. 
which then allows me to summon in vehicles. I can also summon in my main ship here, which is unscathed from the transition into the new galaxy. Um, so yeah, that's basically that's basically all we got here. Um, yeah, we're in the new galaxy. Everything's cool. Uh, the thing that that I that will not uh, that, you, that there's not really any way around is that any technol any exosuit technologies that are not in one of these technology slots these will be broken. <coughs> so I will I will have to repair all of this stuff if I want to stay in this if I'm not just jumping into the next galaxy. So yeah. So all right. Um, so let me uh, let me jump over to my web browser here and just show you the No Man's Sky wiki. Uh, pages for the galaxy that we started this video in and then the galaxy that we just jumped to. So yeah, the previous galaxy was called What Yorogi, and it was Galaxy 29 and it's type normal. And then the next one, the, the one that we jumped into is Sudzerbal, a lush type galaxy, galaxy number 30. And yeah, this is the page for galaxies in general. There's a big list of all of them. This is what explains the different probabilities of different types of systems. Um, and the four types are normal, uh, which is like the starting galaxy in No Man's Sky, Euclid. Lush, uh, which as I've, as I've explained is like the one that we just jumped to. And then there are also harsh and empty galaxies. Harsh galaxies are exactly what they sound like. They have a much higher likelihood of harsh planets uh, you know, with just all kinds of storms and hostile sentinels and all that kind of stuff. And then empty galaxies uh, don't have less stuff in them. They just have a higher probability of different types of planets that are like sort of strange or creepy sort of uh, planets. That's the best way I can describe it briefly. Uh, and yeah, if you've played the game, any you, you've probably stumbled upon planets that are, you know, just sort of eerily empty or they have like strange shapes and stuff instead of normal foliage and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, those are the four types of galaxies. Um, the big old list of them here, you know, like they vary, you know, any given one of these is going to be a different type and it's going to have, you know, just entirely different random generation. Uh, I mean, not like, you know, as you can see from this planet here, this is still the kind of, this. you know, you might still find a planet that looks very much like this in the starting galaxy of Euclid. But you won't find a planet that looks exactly like this and that has the exact same name and wildlife living on it and plants, you know, and then the actual uh, star system that it's in here and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's not like a whole different, it's not like you're, when you jump to a new galaxy, it's not like you're playing an entirely different game or anything, but it is, you know, it's different enough. And if you've, uh, frankly, if you've played far enough into the game to get to the point where you have more than one ship, more than one multi-tool, you know, and you have like all the portal glyphs, you've probably played all the way through the story or whatever. So, you know, it's worth it's worth making the journey to these different galaxies and just kind of seeing what they're all about because other players have definitely been to all these other galaxies and built stuff there and you just never know what you're going to find. That's the that's the fun of this game. So anyway, that's about all I got. Uh, yeah, you're now ready to explore the new galaxy or repeat the process and jump to the next and the next. Uh, yeah, so that's about all I got. There's 256 of these. I think when you reach the last one, you wrap around and you end up, you, you end up back in the first starting galaxy, Euclid. Um, I'm only on galaxy 30, so it would take, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a while before I hit that milestone yet, but yeah, it has never been easier with the removal of uh, portal interference to make these trips to different galaxies. So, yeah, just yeah, happy travels, and if this, I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, and yeah, if there's anything that I didn't explain properly or anything, let me know in the comments. I guess I don't know. I was just kind of doing this for for a little helpful thing. So yeah, thanks for watching, and hope you have a nice day.